Hey guys, Jeff here, Dice Setters. Come up with the the very end of our tick trips and uh, trips trips and try it one more time. Tips and tricks. This will be part three. There are so many. I could go on for days, but that's probably not what you want to do. Is hear me talk. Most time you want action, so this will be the last time. But if you have extra ones for next time, not a problem. If you enjoyed the series, definitely say something. If you didn't, say something. I will be in Vegas in July, the very first part of July, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Um, meet and greet, whatever you want to do. I'll sit there and throw craps with you, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you let me know like a week or two before. Also, Halloween. Um, Halloween will be on a Monday. I will be in Vegas Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It will be the SEMA show. My focus is on SEMA, on the classes that they have. I really could care less about the cars. It's just, yeah, it's whatever. But if you want to meet up then, I can do so, but it'll be later in the evening so I can sit there and do my classes. So this one is just tips and tricks, and we're, we're looking at how we can sit there and implement new ideas to our game to sit there and see if we can make more money. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I own a business, and we always are looking for something like that. I implemented one thing, and it made a huge, huge difference. So when I implement ideas. It doesn't mean you have to use every single one, but just try one. If it made a difference, man, fantastic. If you try two and they both made a difference, great. That's what it's there for. There are some things that just don't work for you or doesn't work for me. But I'll go ahead and mention them anyways. But there are some that, that are pretty good. Um, a big one um, that I enjoy, and this is if I'm going to, I'll have one definitely July 1st uh, weekend. I will have some kind of keep track of what people are doing. My favorite spot is here, R1. And as it goes around, I'll sit there and I'll even, you know, I'll sit there and put down, you know, dude with blue hair, you know, he's dice setting. And I'll even put down what he's dice setting because after a while you're like, well, is he dice setting or not? I mean, he's, he does set the dice, but is he really truly dice setting? That's important. That's important for me if I want to make money on him. So as it goes around the table, you just sit there, and people will leave. You'll sit there and say, man, I was going to sit there and put money on that guy, and then he'll leave. But definitely, that is a big help, especially if you're going to, you know, if the people around you are going to stay there for, for quite some time. I always put down also, you know, okay, they're rolling a, a, a five, you know, a five, a four, you know, whatever. You know, that, that way I make sure they're doing the same thing. It's also interesting if they're using one die set before the come out roll and one die set after. I would consider that person very well seasoned. Then we're seeing just one, one roll all the time. But either way, it's however you want to look at it. A little trick like that can add up quite a bit of money. If I'm at a table and I don't have much money, there is a way to sit there and overcome that. And you can make so much money. It's crazy. Let's say 100 bucks. 100 bucks is all I have. 100 bucks to play is all I have. Um, minimum, everyone's complaining that there's not $5 tables where they live. I'll do 15. Actually, I'll do 25. We're going to do a $25 table. I will have something here for the dealers. Um, do a dollar here. Um, something on the world bet. Um, do five. So right now I've got 31. 31 right now and all I have is $100. My first roll, of course, not dice setting. Eight. Puck moves here, now we're trying for the eight. I don't put anything here. I put nothing here, I put nothing here. I'm only sitting there working the bonuses. And this will be uh, all tall, small. However you want to do it. Depends on how much money you have. You can do a tall and a small, or you can do all. I would rather do small and tall. I've seen a guy just kill it. Dice it. And this is all he had on the table. And his rack just kept on growing. He would not bet on anybody else's stuff. He would sit there and wait until it went around the table until it came to him. And then he would dice it and sit there and get the all, tall, or small. And just nothing else here, nothing here, 
just minimum here, minimum on the alto small. It can be done. But you have to sit there and think about it. You have to sit there and make sure you're doing what you're saying you're going to do with the dice. Try it. See what happens. Um, I've actually done that at uh, Harris. Harris has, uh, at that time, it was $15 minimum. Yeah, $15 minimum. I think I could do a dollar on each bonus, small and tall. I have a question for you. And if this is your first time ever putting a comment in, that's fine. But I want everyone that's watching to tell me what you would do. And next week, I will tell you what I did. It was a busy casino. It was a casino I absolutely cannot stand. And I won't tell you why I can't stand it. There was a lady who was um, dice setting. And she could sit there and roll like no tomorrow. But this is what she was doing. It was a $15 table. So she had, she had her 15 bucks there. She would sit there and make the point, just like I did. We have it on eight. And then as everyone's throwing the money in the, you know, everywhere, this is what she would do. She would take, most time it was an extra $10, and she would place it on top of here, on her pass line, and then she'd also back it up with odds. And most of the time, she, they never caught her, because she would do it so quickly, here and here, no one ever said anything. That's cheating. That's cheating. That's, that's all there is to it. That is plain, plain cheating. What would you do? The reason why it's cheating for is because you had 15 here before the point was made. And if you roll a 2, a 3, or a 12, you're going to lose this. So you've got to hold on this to get it over the hump, over till you make a you know hit a hit a number, and then for you to sit there and add more to it. The dealers weren't watching, or maybe they didn't know the rules or what. But I'm going to ask you, what would you do? Would you say to the person, "Hey, isn't that cheating?" Would you say to the dealers, "Hey, what the heck?" Or would you say nothing? I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer truly for that. Either way, someone's going to be mad. It's not right to cheat. I don't know. What do you guys think? And again, I don't truly think there's a truly finite right and wrong answer for that. Was I the only one that noticed that the person was cheating and I'm not even a dealer? One thing that's really cool and I try to do it all the time, is, is your payout correct? Is your payout that they give you correct? Do you know what it should be? And if it's not, you better sit there and say something. Most of the time, it uh, is not in your favor. <laughs> but I sit there and try. If you go with, uh, with a friend to the casino, you're playing craps, you should have some kind of deal. If you see a dealer make a mistake, you sit there and mention it, and I'll give you five bucks, and same thing with me. If I see the dealer make a mistake as far as counting back money or shortchanging somebody or overpaying somebody and I say something, you give me five bucks. I wonder how, many, how much money we'd have at the end of the day. I guess it depends on how qualified those dealers are. Or if it's their first time, second time. I don't know. But something that's unique and different. Most time we never worry about the slot machine paying us out correctly. I don't know if we would ever figure out if it did or did not during a jackpot. You would know for, for sure on a line hit. But something that's really cool. Hey, did they, they shortchange me? Was it right on the money? Wasn't I supposed to have another dollar for that? Something you can always think about. Know what your payout's going to be. Know it here before they tell you. That just makes you a better gambler. If you ever watch Brian Christopher, he can have some amazing hits. And he can sit there and tell you, what's supposed to be and why. And there are some times that he's like, I don't understand why they paid me so much. And he'll actually stop the game and actually go through the rules and go, oh, I finally get it. Or sometimes we just don't know. I think there's been two or three times that he doesn't know why he got paid that. But definitely, I always want to make sure I get paid correctly. So if I'm going to make sure I'm going to get paid correctly, I need to know what the amount is that they're supposed to give. It gets really difficult and confusing when you start adding odds. It also makes a difference if it's a if it's a 
even number and odd number up here as well. And so that's when it gets super, super confusing. But if you're there at the craps table enough, eventually you're going to sit there and say, oh, well, that's a even number and I have this much. And so I should be paid this here and this here. Simple. Payout being correct. When I am rolling and say I'm only a one away from the all, it's almost like everybody's in slow motion. It's almost like the dealers, instead of it being one minute to hand you back the dice, it's like 10 minutes before they hand you back the dice. What do you do in that moment? I have a trick for you. Most casinos will always have a TV playing, whether it be sports, whatever, golf. Just watch it. And don't pay any attention to what's going on. You've already got your bet. You're ready to roll the dice. Everyone just keeps on throwing money at the table. Breathe in, breathe out, watch the TV. I know it's not interesting, but what it's going to do is it's going to take your mind off of you wanting that dice because you're at a streak. All you need is just one more number. Put your mind off of that. If they don't have TV, listen. Listen to some kind of music. It might not be the music that you like, but sing to it, chew gum to it, whatever you got to do. It's just going to transition you focusing on, I want to get the all tall small. And then doing something stupid like rolling a seven. Always there's a TV. I guarantee you there's a TV. There might not be any sound, but you can ask you to watch it and just continually breathe in, breathe out. It will help you tremendously. There will be situations that you will want to leave the table. If they're an argument or whatever that leaves you feeling angry, that's the time to leave the table. You're not going to play at 100%. Anything that's going to keep you from playing less than 100%, unless you don't care about your money. If you don't care about your money, it don't matter. But any situation, I've sat there and had the pit bosses get mad at me. I had to leave. I was not in the wrong. But if I were to continue to play, I would just lose my money. What's more important? Losing your money, arguing with the pit boss, losing my money. So I just walked away. I walked away and didn't say anything. That's the best possible way you can do. Even if you're perhaps maybe under the influence of whatever, it's not a good time to play unless you like losing your money. Know when that situation arises. If you're with a friend and you see that situation arise, be the bigger man or a woman. And sit there and say, come on, let's, let's go play some slot machines for a while. Because that's when you're going to sit there and lose a couple of hundred. Because your mind is not focused on these dice in this game. Your mind is thinking about, well, that guy sat there and did this. And this person over here is getting mad at me for this. It's time to walk away. It doesn't mean that you're a loser. It just means that you know when to walk away. Make sure you always, always, always use your player's card. That being said, all the table games are quite wild when you look at the card that you, you know, you give them a card, you give them money, you play for a while, you color up, you leave. If this is your main casino, the very following day, let's say you gave them $500 and you only played 300 of it. I would sit there and ask your promotions person, say, hey, yesterday I was at the craps table. Can you tell me? what they put on the paperwork how much you know was it good was it bad and if there's a discrepancy then that's when you need to sit there and go to the pit boss and say look i put down this much money and i was playing for this long and you guys only caught me for you know whatever that's important here's a trick most casinos are for you guys the players they don't want you guys to get mad at paying taxes. So if you're always at the same casino, I would almost guarantee you that whatever your highest payout is, is also as much money as you've lost. Your profit and loss is kind of zero. That's great. That means I don't owe any extra, if you know what I'm talking about. But something you need to take in consideration Especially if you're with uh, a new casino or a new place that you're like, man, this place is good. Find out 
what they're doing as far as, okay, I played $300 through, what did you put down in the paperwork? And they won't know until the following day. Sometimes it might take one or two days for that to happen. But it would sure hate to suck for you to think, hey, I'm playing $1,000, I did $1,000, you know, and I'm playing with that. And then for them to sit there and say, oh yeah, he played with $100. It'd make a world of difference because you're not a $100 player, you're a $1,000 player. And that's where the, the comps come in. That's where the free rooms come in. That's where the, all the, you know, the free promotions and everything else. That's big, especially the higher up you go. So definitely always, always check for that. Most of the time, if anything, they actually average a little higher on you know the casinos that I go to and the ones I do check. I imagine there are some that don't don't do it correctly, but the ones I do check, it seems it seems correct. And sometimes if you want to, in the middle of it, or if you're not playing, you can ask the pit boss, hey, you know, how much do you have me down for? What are you what are, you know, what are my comps looking at? And they'll tell you, as long as it's not, you know, on a Friday night or a Saturday night and there's twenty people playing at a at a six man uh, crap stable. But they'll be happy to tell you, hey, I got you down for this much money. All right, thank you. Not a problem. But use your card. It's All it is is just uh, a loyalty card. That's all I can tell you. It's, I'm loyal to this casino. Pay me. I'm here with my spending money. I always come every month. Do something nice for me. We've already spent enough money on gasoline. Give me free room. Free food. Free play. Nothing tubware. No pictures, nothing you can use in the kitchen. We're talking about cash. We're talking about money. Those are my tips and tricks. I imagine if I sat there and brainstormed, I could give you a whole new three more series. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for dice setting. But it does show you the whole picture, the whole casino. And that's what I want to show you. It's like a documentary and we're only focusing on one thing. No, this is, this is the whole thing. And that's why my show... My channel is so much different, I think, than others because it, it has to be different. I am different. That's all I can tell you. I'm different. My show is going to be different. If you didn't like that one, I imagine there's other shows that, that you'd probably like. But if you want to win, win big and get those little things that you're just like, man, that little bit picked me up here. That, that throw that you showed me picked me up there. And after a while, man, we're going. In... Uh, Phoenix, they do have craps, and I have been asked to play. And so the week of June, the Saturdays, except for the very first one, because I'll be on my way back from San Diego, I will put it out there that if you want to sit there and play, I will sit there and play. But I need to know a couple of weeks in advance. So we have the second, third, and fourth Saturday weekend of June someplace in Phoenix. I have never thrown craps in Phoenix. I've only gone to the tables and looked. They do have a hybrid tables. They do have regular tables. It doesn't matter to me. I've never played on a hybrid table. But if you want to sit there and meet up, that's fantastic. It be, works better for me if it was in the morning. But I know that it won't work that way for everybody. But you can go to Facebook, go to Dice Setters, and you now have to be a member, but then put it up there. Now, you sit there and say, well, Jeff, I'm not close to Las Vegas, and Jeff, I'm not close to Phoenix. You can still do that if you're in New York, New Jersey, Florida. It doesn't matter. Sit there and say, hey, I want to play craps with some people. This is where I go. Anybody interested? Eventually, it will sit there and take off. Eventually, but this is just the, the ground, you know, roots right now. This is a grassroots kind of thing. This is, it's going to get bigger. But we can't sit there and build until the foundation is good enough to sit there and start stacking all this stuff on top. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the groundwork laid out here. And then after a while, we're going to sit there and really, really grow. But I don't want to grow too fast. Because if the groundwork is not set good enough, it's not going to work. And that's what I'm trying to do. So if Phoenix area or anywhere, just sit there and put it up there. Hey, I go to Timbuktu on Thursday nights and I die set. And I sit there and I can roll 30 times in a row without 70 out. There's going to be people that are like, hey, that looks pretty interesting. That looks like fun. Not hard. It's free advertisement. It didn't cost you a buck. Just try it. Dice Setters on Facebook. Like, share, subscribe. I need to get to 1,000. I'm only 210, I think, away from, 
from a thousand. If you didn't like this video, there's almost 125 other ones. There might be one you might like. And I think that's it. I don't know when I'll be back in Vegas for June, but July I'll be there for the first. Halloween, the day after Halloween, for the whole week I'll be there. And I'm open to any questions that you might have. No question is a dumb question. The only dumb question is an unasked question. And if I help you, and I learn something from you, that just makes me better. And then we all can sit there and be a better player. Have a good one, guys.